Welcome to the New Life Behavior International video cast and podcast series. Presented by volunteer instructors, the New Life Behavior International series is presented in countries globally and in several on the African continent. Courses are available on nlbi.co.za and is absolutely free of charge. However, donations are welcome and completely voluntary. The core curriculum is a comprehensive study to discover a meaningful and personal relationship with God, with the objective to help individuals from all walks of life to be reconciled to God, reconciliation to families and society. The curriculum contains 174 lessons divided into 14 courses and is well received by both Christians and non-Christians alike. All the lessons are available on our website nlbi.co.za and you may communicate via email info at nlbi.co.za The outline of the curriculum is explained by volunteer instructor Oscar de Vries. These lessons will cover the following A sense of self A sense of family Parenting matters True freedom Christian marriage skills, Christian women, attitudes and behaviors, Christians against substance abuse, is a family net series, the seeker Bible study series, prisoners of Christ, managing my anger, Christians against sex addiction, managing my finance. In this way we say welcome to New Life Behavior Ministries. Hello everybody. Yeah, Oscar here from New Life Behavior. I'm just a facilitator and a volunteer for New Life Behavior and working with uh, unlockradio.live and um, we are just here to bring you these video casts and presenting all the lessons that you will find on the websites. The websites will be nlbi.co.za or nlbi.net. You can access them and you can find all the materials, the video casting, the studies, and you may use that in any any way that is uh, useful to you. We're recording 11 courses and they are various themes and various uh, aspects of life. And so you're welcome to, to look at all the video casts or even to look at the studies that are on the websites. And so today we find ourselves in course three, which we've been dealing with, talking about fathers, talking about stress, and then talking about taking children, making children winners. And then today we want to get just a little bit closer in course three, Parenting Matters, Modeling Winning Behavior. How do we model? What's the model of winning behavior? and which we're going to follow in the same lesson with reinforcing winning behavior. And so as we get to this lesson today, what we're wanting to do is we want to look how parents model winning behavior for their children. How do we model winning behavior for our children? You see, it's the power of what we do over whatever we may say. That's it. It's the doing and the saying. And so if we look at observational learning, we see that, in other words, there's no one right way of teaching, of learning. Let's accept that. And whatever works best is the right way of learning for the individual. You see, but by observing seeing someone do something we learn to do the same thing 
And then we say, well, that's just like dad or mom used to do it. It's because of the observation. In other words, by example, this form of learning places a heavy burden on the person who is modeling a certain behavior. There's a responsibility there. You know, the, what are the effects of modeling? Well, modeling as a teaching tool is neutral. The behaviors that are modeled make it either, either good or bad. So the teaching is neutral, but the behaviors that are modeled make it either good or bad. You see, a child, for example, a child might know that it is good to help others. But when he sees an adult helping another person, it reinforces that child's tendency to be helpful or to help others. In other words, modeling teaches a child behavior that is socially acceptable or unacceptable or deviant. Now let's talk about modeling winning behavior. Children are extremely susceptible to modeling by others. In other words, the younger the child, the more sensitive he is or she is. The reason for, for this is that, the, that, that children do not have a large, young children don't have a large reservoir of knowledge or experience that they can draw from. An older child becomes um, more, less susceptible and more, in other words, the more exposure an older child gets, the more selective that child will become. Now, what do we model? Well, we model by relationships. In other words, although parents are primary modelers, all people who come into contact with a child will influence his or her development. And this is this is one re reason it's important for us to monitor and control the different influences. It's important for a parent to do that. And what are, you know, what are the influence of adult people around a child or peers or television or books or internet? All of these things are in our faces today and to which our children are also exposed. In other words, if we want our children to develop a well-balanced personality showing reverence to God, treating people with dignity and respecting social and governmental institutions, we have to model that behavior for them. Instead of teaching, in other words, we've got to ask ourselves, instead of are we, are we teaching reverence for God or are we teaching that God has no importance in our lives. The abundant life is based on the word of God and the teachings of the word of God, whether we accept that or reject that. But that's the fundamental underlying model that we have. And then also what we do is we also, we model our attitudes. In other words, a parent takes responsibility for their actions and he or she is teaching his children that they must be responsible for what they do and what they say their actions and their attitudes and there's another aspect of of uh, modeling behavior and that is affection you know children learn to show love by watching their parents and too often when we get to what we call dysfunctional families, meaning there's conflict in the family, there's misbehavior in the family, there's abuse in the family, the line between love and hate becomes so blurred that the children don't know which is which. And love is a giving relationship. Wanting what's, whatever is best in, and in the best interest of the one who is loved. And also reactions. When we talk about where do we see the modeling of behavior in reactions. In other words, children learn to how to react to different events. So if you look at the parents, and parents' first reaction is to have a, a meltdown or rage. 
or become overly emotional or handles a thing in a very calm, logical way, the child will follow that as well. And also when we talk about modeling, let's talk about ambitions. You know, we need to have a clear-cut goal or purpose. And if we do have that, in all probability, our children will also. If a parent's ambition is to serve God, the child also learns to serve God. The child also, the child's perception is that God is part of being alive. Now, let's say, when should we start modeling? Well, it says that we should start early. The book of Proverbs again speaks to us. Proverbs chapter one, the first seven verses. You can read it in the message beautifully uh, set out there. But it says we need to teach the inexperienced the ropes and give our young people a grasp on reality. I think that is a nice way to describe it. They're inexperienced, teach them the ropes and let them grab hold of reality. That doesn't mean stark reality. It just means how life is to be lived. You know, from the earliest moments of their lives, you are setting an example for your children. Children are never too young to learn. It's our responsibility as a parent to decide what they learn. And again, we just go and look at God's word. If you look at you know, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. It puts it so simply. It simply says, get them inside of you, talking about teachings, how we model, how we bring about winners. It says, get them inside of you and then get them inside your children. And if you go to the book of Psalms, the encouragement in Psalm 34 is to say, come children, listen closely. And then Psalm 78 speaks to us. It says, why do we teach our children? Why do we as parents try to model our children? It says, so that the next generation will know that it will pass from generation to generation. And perhaps we miss that, that when we look at earlier generations and later generations, we can't actually connect the two at all. Infants and young children are highly receptive to learning. And most of our learning takes place within the first few years of our life. Children imitate their parents for several reasons. One is that they're around their parents most of the time. And secondly, because they depend on their parents. And thirdly, because they trust their parents. An effective modeler is one who has desirable characteristics. An effective modeler is one who is consistent in his words and his deeds and a person who practices what they preach, to use the proverb. And if a modeler's actions are inconsistent with his words, this only creates confusion. An effective modeler is one who causes positive reinforcement with our children. The more the child sees an action modeled, the more the child, the more the child would want to imitate that action. So when parents model winning behavior and attitudes, they are doing it with love. They need to do it with love. And winning behavior is more than just wanting your child to be financially and socially successful. It is wanting your child to be successful also in terms of what we say in new life behavior, to be successful in their relationship with God. Again, Proverbs chapter 22 says, point your kids in the right direction. And it says in in Joel chapter 1, it says, let your children tell their children. And it says, you tell your children so that they can tell their children. 
And in, even when the Bible makes reference to those that were leading the church in the early century, it says, be attentive to your children. And so I want to just move on briefly now to the reinforcing of winning behavior. We talked about that just right now. Now we want to say, in other words, how can I reinforce winning behavior? So what we mean is reinforcing is the idea that it can be encouraging or in fact it can be discouraging. But what we want to do is to reinforce winning behavior. Now, now really there are four parts to this. And one is the repeated graduated practice in doing something. In other words, it's an upward movement and the giving of praise for small improvements with the child. In other words, you, you, you recognize that and you praise that. And then you give feedback on how much improvement has been made. And I, I'm not trying to be specific, but more general here. And even sometimes you can say improvements that still need to be made. And statements are designed to promote the person with expectations of gradual and eventual success. Now they're misuses of positive reinforcement. One of them is flattery. Flattery is a deceitful form of praise. It's totally, absolutely wrong. And bribery, you know, if you do something, I'll give you something. And in us modern world, I think bribery is connected to money and corruption. So like flattery, bribery is always wrong. And then let's talk about expectations. You know, we all have different abilities and potentials, talents. We, we, we're all given something different and something positive. But when we expect as parents, for instance, in reinforcing winning behavior, we can't demand or expect people to perform above the limits of their ability. Otherwise, we're hurting them. And they will consider themselves as failures. And they will lose their self-esteem. You now, if a child is academically not an A student, don't tell them they have to be an A student. There are some fantastic people in our world that would never have been A students, for instance, but if they've been great successes in their lives in the way that they've taken life with the abilities they have. So don't have unrealistic expectations. And what are the types of reinforcers? Well, there's the social reinforcement. In other words, social reinforcement can take different directions. One is to give praise to a child. Praise is being truthful with the child. That's important. In other words, it's important that you don't qualify your praise by tacking on a statement such as, you know, but. Don't do that. Stay with the praise. Let the praise stand by itself. Don't include the but. Give attention socially. Give attention to your children to reinforce their behavior. You see, most, excuse me, most families today have allowed society to make unrealistic demands upon them and their children. That's the society we're living in today. It's first world, whatever you want to call it, but that's a problem. And it's only when parents place the long-term interest of their children above the shallow go-go kind of life, you know, full life with lots of things. And when we get rid of the go-go culture, that families will function as God intended them to function. Affection is a third way to express positive social reinforcement. You know, it's a hug. It's a smile. It's a touch. It's a kind word. And showing affection should not depend on a child doing what we want him or her to do. 
it it really should be separate and apart and spontaneous in our daily lives. And sometimes what we do is we want to control our children to the extent that in their activities we restrict them, whereas in fact we should reward a child by allowing them, obviously if it's good for them, with a favorite activity. That's a very, very strong reinforcer for a child. So let's look at a few principles for using positive reinforcement. A child needs to understand what behavior is desired. And so the encouragement here is treat your children with respect. They're not nothings, as we've said before. Part of the positive reinforcement process is to develop your child's self-esteem. That is one of the most fundamental and important things in life is to develop a child's self-esteem. Do not attack the child's personality. You are trying to change their behavior and to build self-esteem. That's the important thing. And so as we just take this whole lesson and put it together, you know, when parents want their children to develop certain behaviors and attitudes. Parents need to model them. And the earlier we start the process, the easier it will be both on the parents and the children. Don't wait too long. Don't let it get to the point when you realize, sure, we should have, it, it's, it's just, let's start, let's, let's, Take the attitude that we want to develop our children's behavior and attitudes in a very positive, constructive way that they become mature adults. And most of all, yes, have God as their shepherd. Thank you for listening. Let's close with a word of prayer. Our Father, Thank you for the instruction that we have in your word. Some of the words that we use, we think is our own wisdom. The generation, the, the, the passing of, of truths and positive and reinforced behavior, Father, we think belongs to us, but it's there in your word. It's talking to us as to how we should live, how we should uh, have winning children children that are mature and fulfilled and have self-esteem within their own capabilities. And, your know, Father, just help us as parents to always be concerned that our children are our children, our responsibility. And, Father, we just pray that we will do everything we can, despite our failings, and when we ourselves do things that are, are wrong or or we see as a failing, but help us, Father, to look at our children as being models of ourselves in a very constructive and positive way. Bless us every day, Father. Give us the strength, the understanding, the knowledge, and the wisdom to do your will in Christ's name. Now, just a few little easy tips. First of all, each lesson is going to ask you to note a few personal thoughts about the question that is asked. And then read the questions at the end of the lesson, but do not attempt to answer them. Then study or read the lesson. Then answer the questions and then give yourself the opportunity to write some personal reflections. And you are more than welcome to send your answers and questions to info at nlbi.co.za